Hello everyone. Over the past couple of years, I've been on an adventure of building my own teardrop trailer from scratch. I finished the build last summer. Since then, I've taken it on some challenging off-roading trips, as well as a couple of uh, long 800-mile journeys. I incorporated some unique design features that I believe make this an ultimate off-roading teardrop trailer. From a high clearance design using timbering axleless suspension to 37-inch tires that match my Jeeps, this trailer is built to tackle tough terrain. The addition of a lock and roll hitch provides a 360-degree articulation and an added various locking mechanisms to ensure things will stay in place on the rough roads. Well, I didn't initially plan to document my build process, I have now decided to share it through a mini-series of videos. Please note the sequence might not always follow a linear progression, but I hope you will enjoy the series. In today's part one, I'll be focusing on the electrical design since I need to reinstall the rooftop solar panel. But before I get started, let me quickly walk through the main features of the trailer. The first feature I have is the timber and axleless suspension. It provides high clearance. Last time I measured, I still have like 15 inch clearance. The second feature are those 37 inch tires on the trailer. They match my Jeep's tires. So now they can share the spare tire on my Jeep. Trust me to carry a 37 inch spare tire on such a small trailer is a huge design challenge. On the front, I've got this uh, lock and roll off-roading hitch. It is supposed to provide 360 degree articulation. Ignore this uh, jack whistle wheel, it's temporary. I just put it on so I can move the trailer around easily. Finally, on the back side, I've added multiple layers of uh, locking mechanism. So the fridge, water bottle, battery, stove, all the cabinets have latches. Originally, when I designed it, it only used the, uh, this rod to lock it, but the uh, rods failed, everything fell out. So that's why I added all this uh, locking mechanism. Even more, what I did was I added this external latch like this. So even when the internal locking rods fails, this will keep the door closed. In the next segment, I'll walk you through the process of uh, reinstalling the rooftop solar panel. I've opted for the 200 watt Renergy suitcase solar panel kit that it comes with a charge controller. Interestingly, I'm reinstalling it. Last of all, I custom made racks and brackets to install the same Renergy model. However, the panel turned out to be defective, failing to charge after a couple of trips. Renergy sent me a replacement, but it has entirely different dimensions. Now I need to reconfigure the racks. I'll be using most of the existing hardware in this process. However, when I bought the original Renergy solar panel, it has an entire different dimension. So it will actually fit inside this, the entire thing. So I align all of this uh, brackets and the, the unit truss and I custom made all those brackets and drilled the holes so I can uh, support the original solar panel. Now they have changed the dimension, the new replacement. So I'm gonna have to go through, remove all of this. I counted all those bolts. I think it's probably 20 something 
all the bolts and nuts and the washers have to remove all of them then reconfigure this it looks like it will work it's just a pain in the neck I have, maybe I have to re redo this bracket because I don't know how the new configuration whether how the things will fit together but that's what I'm gonna find out I'm gonna first uh, go ahead and remove everything and we put it together based on a new dimension. It looks promising, so I may have to re-drill this hole, put it here, hopefully I can reuse this hole, and put it up here. Similarly, I might be able to just do this. So this is why reuse the existing brackets is a challenge. So this one is after I drill the hole, you can see it's at least one eighth off. So I'm gonna have to. I don't want to remake the bracket here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just shave this off. As you can see here. This is another case that uh, when you try to reuse the bracket or when the dimension changes, it just throws everything off. And this is metal, although this is like a, a quarter inch off, but I, I can't just put this on like this. And also you can see this bracket is not in the middle, line up in the middle any, anymore. Originally, everything is perfectly aligned. Now, it's going to be misaligned here and there, a little bit everywhere. The original design has this uh, wing nuts on the back side of the panel, so I can remove the wing nuts and lift the panel. But uh, since I made so many compromises to fit this panel onto the rack, it doesn't really work out. Everything is kind of twisted. Yes, I can tilt the solar panel if I need to. There are still some uh, loose ends I need to tighten up for it to, to work properly with this new panel. There's a charging ports for the battery. Either this is the solar or you can use this, uh, the uh, charger adapter to charge it using the AC power. Now I have connected the solar panel to the battery. And you can see it is uh, it's hard to see. It is charging now. Now that the solar panel is connected and charging, let's delve into the full electrical design. As illustrated in this wiring diagram, I have a 100 amp hour live PO4 battery capable of being charged via AC adapter or solar power. Positioned above the battery is a full shutoff switch preventing any ghost draining when the camper is not in use. The camper features two main appliances, a 12-volt fridge and a Max Air Deluxe camper fan, alongside the lighting and a charging outlet. Let me do a quick walkthrough of the electrical system. As you can see here, this is two uh, negative and a two positive. The one comes from the charging port and uh, one goes inside the camper. As you can see here, they go up here and this is the kill switch. I can turn it on. From here it goes to the distribution box and it fans out to the, the camper, inside the camper. You can see the first wire comes out of here and it goes to the fridge. As you can hear the fridge is on now. Once it go is inside the cabin. Um, this is the uh, the fan. It has a remote controller. So I think you can turn on somehow. This way maybe. Oh yeah. 
but anyway, so it's a max fan. And here's the uh, the cabin lights. So this one by default it has this LED light on. So I switched on. You can see the lights come on, and I think this is for the external lights. Yeah, you can see the the lights are on, and those are the uh, reading lights. They all come with uh, USB ports, so it's very convenient. Turn this off. Now what else? There's some charging ports here. There's light goes into here. I originally designed that way, but ever since disconnected, it's useless. This is uh, pretty much it for the electrical system. This camper represents my first serious DIY project. I learned pretty much everything from YouTube. I learned how to use a SketchUp and created my own design. I learned how to weld and build my own frame. I hope you find this video insightful. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Suddenly, six Jeeps show up.